impossible for the Lord to fail. That's one of the things that he cannot do. There's very few things that God can't do. One of them is he cannot fail. We can fail. Some of you failed on the way into the parking lot. We can fail. We fail a lot. But God never fails. Isn't that wonderful? That we have a God who's completely without fault, blameless, and that he's on our side. Three happy people. As, come on. Is it the Carl's Jr. truck? What is it tonight? They have to put the truck right there in front of me, man. We're so glad that you're here. We're on the threshold of our 18th year anniversary here at the Wayworld Outreach. Come on, give it up. Give it up for God and what he's done with this, our amazing church. And God, the one who never fails, has allowed us to do ministry for the last 18 years. And the ministry has been very effective. Just look around you. Everyone standing here is a product of the ministry of the Wayworld Outreach. I'm so grateful that Pastor Marco and Pastor Carmen, his mom, and Pastor Robert and, and their families took up this mantle, took up this huge responsibility of carrying a church. And I'm so grateful for them. And I'm so grateful that they allowed me and my family to be a part of the church. And I don't know about you, but the church I was going to was a little bit boring. And I'm so glad that I got out of that boring church and I'm here at a church that's on fire for God in San Bernardino. And we're out across the globe now. We're in Africa and in Mexico and Safford, Arizona. And we're all over the place now. And God is just going to continue to expand our borders. How many looking forward to that? So let's pray and we'll get to the word. Can we do that? All right. Father, we thank you and bless you for this time. You said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. And it's impossible for you to ever fail us. And we're so thankful, God, for tonight. We're so grateful for your presence. Help us, God, to hear your word tonight. Let every word be established in the hearts of your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You could be seated. Would you give me a little bit more on my monitor, please? Don't make me work for it, please. I'm getting too old to work for it, Pastor Chris, Christian. So, if you look around at all these faces, what you see is a collection of or a collaboration of people who have been touched by Jesus. That's a lot of people. Look around. What we have here is a conglomeration of individual souls who at some point were lost with nowhere to go, with no foundation, with no vision, with no aspirations, with no dreams, who were hostages of the devil, who were enslaved to addiction and sin and bound to poverty, and you met Jesus. And Jesus had a moment with you. I don't know what your moment was like, but the moment I had was electrifying. It was a moment where he touched me and it was completely life changing. And I have to believe that he's on the same mission all the time. He is in, he is in the business of touching souls. And so every person here has been touched by God. And so this touch 
has been so impactful in your life that you show up for church every Wednesday, every Sunday, Holy Warriors classes, any time the church is open, you are here because you're hungry for a touch from God. And so these touches can be a little bit addicting. More addicting than those hamburgers. If you've been touched by God, you know that it only takes one touch. Only one touch will change a life forever. And so we know that and because we know that, we bring people to church. We bring family and friends that are lost to church. We pray for them for months, if not years, that they come through these doors and God touches them. Because you know, as well as I know, that if God touches your family, that they will be changed forever. And so we bring people to church. We go out in the streets and we're just hoping and praying that God would touch the people. Because that's what it's going to take. It is going to take the power of God's touch to change the world. It can't be my touch. My touch will, will be useless. You might get worse if I touch you. But if God touches you, your life will be changed forever. How many can testify to that? The word touch comes from the Greek word haptomai. And it means to adhere, to stick to, to hold, to fasten, to fasten fire to a thing to kindle, to, to set on fire. So not only is God touching you, but he's transferring fire to you. He's transferring power to you. If you've ever been touched by God in this way, just shout yes, because God not only just touches you, he transfers anointing and fire into your life. In the Bible, in the Gospels, there are 200, at least 200 touches by Jesus. In the Gospels, you hear words like the hands of Jesus, the fingers of Jesus, the feet of Jesus, the touches of Jesus. One scripture says that Jesus put out his hand and he touched them. Another scripture says that Jesus touched her hand. Another scripture says that Jesus touched their eyes. Another verse says that Jesus came and touched them all. Men, women, children, they all came to be touched by God. And God touched them all. Now Jesus, he would touch anybody. Jesus was not afraid to get his hands dirty. It didn't matter if you stunk. It didn't matter if you were a beggar. It didn't matter if you were a drunkard. It didn't matter if you were a sinner. It didn't matter if you're a thief. It didn't matter if you're a prostitute. It didn't matter if you're a backslidden. It didn't matter if you're full of demons. Those things would not prevent Jesus from touching you. As a matter of fact, they made him want to touch you even more. Because once those hands of God touch a person in any condition, his touch will change their life. And so he wasn't afraid. He wasn't embarrassed. He wasn't ashamed. He would touch anybody. 
In Luke chapter 5, verse 13, the Bible says that Jesus touched a man with leprosy. And the Bible says that immediately the, les the leprosy disappeared from him. That means it is suffering left. When Jesus touches you, if you're suffering, if you have pain, if they were hurt, if their bodies were afflicted, the moment that Jesus touched them, the suffering left them. So when Jesus touches you, whatever you had before the touch, it leaves you immediately, the Bible says. That means right now, it's not allowed to stay. It can't hang out any longer. Once God touches you, it has to go. Tell your neighbor, you don't have to wait for it. You don't have to wait. Matthew chapter 20, the Bible says that Jesus, some blind men came to Jesus and they wanted Jesus to help them to see. And Jesus, the Bible said, had compassion on them. Compassion means that he was moved from the inside that their affliction, their problem, their issue, their blindness, that it caught the attention of Jesus and it moved him, it provoked him to do something about it. Did you know that you can move God to touch you? That you can provoke a touch from God? Like, the more that you ask for the touch, the more that you petition God for the touch, you do something to his insides. You stir up compassion, love, he doesn't want to see a son or a daughter in pain. He doesn't want to see a son or a daughter in torment. So your heavenly father wants to touch you. He touched those men who were blind. He had compassion on them. The Bible says immediately they received their sight. Somebody say immediately. Tell your neighbor I ain't waiting. I ain't waiting no more. Been waiting long enough. I ain't waiting no more. I need my touch tonight. I need a touch from God tonight. I can't wait anymore. You know if God touches your situation tonight, everything's going to change. The moment he touches you, everything's going to change. There's going to be a shift. Demons are going to scatter when God touches you. I don't know if you believe me. I love it out here because it feels like there's no ceiling. There's no ceiling here. There's no roof. Sometimes uh, we're, in, we're in service and I feel like our praise hits a ceiling. Like we can't break through. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Well, here there's no excuse. We have an open heaven. God's glory is here. It's right in front of us. There's no excuse. Like his, his hand could be right there. There's nothing in the way from you getting a touch tonight. In Mark chapter 7, the Bible says that they brought a man to Jesus who was deaf and could hardly talk. The Bible says that they begged. Someone say beg for it. They begged Jesus to touch him. They what? Begged him. When's the last time you begged for anything? There used to be a song back in the 60s called uh, By the Temptations. It would, it would say, I ain't too proud to beg. And he's talking about begging for his girl to come back. That's probably the last time you begged. 
Interesting. We'll beg for a woman to come back, but we won't beg God to touch us. Come on, man. Where are my men at? Stand up, man. Where are my men at tonight? Stand up for me. Come on. This, this Friday, everyone, all the men are going up the hill. And we ain't going up the hill to pay, play patty cake. Some of you are married. Your wife is like praying that, you, that God touches you. Pray, Lord, help them. She like gave up a lot for you to go up there. She didn't buy shoes. She, she sold some stuff for you to go up there. Please, God, touch them. And so we're going up there this Saturday. How many men going up the hill this Saturday? Friday. I, Friday we go up. We're going to go up the hill. And what are we going to do? We're going to touch God. Or God's going to touch us. And we're going to come down this hill changed. Completely changed. Completely on fire for God. So when you go home, they're not going to recognize you anymore. They ain't going to recognize their, mom, their dad anymore. They can't recognize their husband anymore. Their son anymore. Because God is going to touch you. How many believe that? All right. Okay, man, you can sit down. Or how about men stand up all servers like me? No, that's... You can't be too proud to beg. You can't be too proud to beg for a touch from God. You can't look cool and get touched by God. You can't look cute and get touched by God because it's completely ridiculous. You're going to look ridiculous when he touches you. Your makeup's going to smear. Your nose is going to run. Spit's going to come out your mouth. Your wig might fall off. You can't look cool and be touched by God. You're going to have to beg for the touch and you can't be too proud. Proud people don't get touched. If you're too hip, too proud, too cool, you ain't ever getting touched. Because you're too proud to admit that you need a touch. Too proud to admit that you have a need, that something's broken, that you need a fixing. You, you need God to help you. Don't let your pride get in the way of God touching you. Amen. Amen. Mark 7, verse 33, Jesus took a man away from the crowd to touch him. There's 200 people in the Gospels who got touched by Jesus. We're only going to talk about 198 of them tonight. <laughs> Jesus took a man from the crowd to touch him. A crowd just like this. This is the only time in the Bible that Jesus did this. He focused on an individual man. And Jesus removes the man from the crowd and takes him to a different location so that he could touch him. This is the only time in the entire Bible that Jesus did this. And he did this because sometimes God has to remove you from your environment to touch you. For some of you, your environment is preventing you from being touched. The people you're hanging out with. The places that you're hanging out with. Is preventing you from being touched. And so God has to replant you. God has to move you from your environment. 
He has to move you away from the streets. He has to move you away from your clicas, from your gangs. Move you away from the homeboys and the homegirls and the social clubs and the sports clubs. And God has to get you by yourself so that he could touch you and if he has to he'll remove your ugly girlfriend and your ugly boyfriend and he will separate you because he's got a touch for you and so if you're all alone right now you ought to shout touch me now lord god is separating you so that he could touch you Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that he moved this man to a different location and he touched him. And the Bible says that Jesus, he moves this man in this new location and Jesus did this. He put his fingers in the man's ears. And if that wasn't enough, the Bible says that he spat and that he touched the man's tongue. Ew. That's nasty. But listen, when Jesus touches you, it might get a little sloppy. It could get a little ugly. It could be a little embarrassing. It could get, be a little awkward. When you see people get touched, boy, it, it gets kind of goofy sometimes. If you've never been around it before, it can kind of spook you out until you're the one being touched. And when you're, if you've ever been touched by God, you know that it can be a little uncomfortable when he touches you. But it feels so good. Tell your neighbor, just go with it. Just go with it. Jesus determines how he touches you. You don't get to determine the process. If he wants to touch your ear, put his finger in your ear. He can put his finger uh, in, your, I don't know, in your ear, in your nose. Not in your nose, I hope not. But whatever it takes. To be changed. How many want some change in your life? Luke chapter 7. The Bible says that Jesus. He touched the coffin. Of a dead man. On his way to be buried. There was a funeral taking place. And they're carrying the casket. And Jesus saw the casket and he went to the coffin and he touched the coffin. And the Bible says that he who was dead inside immediately sat up and began to speak because the power of Jesus has no boundaries. It has no limitations. It has no barriers. There is nothing that can get away, get in the way of a touch from God. Even if your situation seems like it's dead, a touch from Jesus will raise the dead. So you could have the worst of conditions the worst of scenarios going on in your life but that doesn't limit the touch of God if God puts his finger on your situation it'll be resurrected from the dead Matthew chapter 8 we're almost done you can run to Carl's Jr. here in a minute Matthew chapter 8, the Bible says that a centurion came to Jesus and he said, my servant is lying at home, 
paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and touch him. And the centurion answered, Lord, there's no need for that. Just speak a word. Just speak a word. You don't need to go touch him. Just speak a word, Jesus, and your word will touch him. That's all you need. People who need a touch, they don't even need to be in the room to get the touch. This man had a servant at home that needed a touch, but he didn't have to bring Jesus into the home. He just believed the word and the word would deliver the touch. If you have faith in the word of God, you could ask Jesus to send somebody a touch. And Jesus will touch them. Jesus will touch your son, your wayward son, who's out in the streets running amok. Jesus can touch your wayward daughter. He could touch your spouse. And, and there's no limitation as to what he can do. They won't know what hit them. They could be at home right now and you could pray and believe for Jesus to touch them. And they'll call you tomorrow. I don't know what happened. I can't explain it. I was at home watching TV and all of a sudden I felt a touch from God. And I needed to call you. I needed to reach out to you. Mom, dad, we've seen this many times. You can just believe the word. Believe that Jesus can touch them right where they're at. They can be in prison. They can be homeless. They can be bound. They can be on the streets. It doesn't matter. There's hope for them. God can touch them right now. Last one, Luke chapter 8, verse 43. The Bible says a woman in the crowd. Are there any women in the crowd tonight? A woman. The guy's just looking for one. Are you the one tonight? One woman, a woman in the crowd who was suffering. There's a woman in the crowd tonight who's suffering. A woman in the crowd was suffering. All the women who are doing okay, this is not for you. I just want to talk to women who are suffering. Women who have been backstabbed, women who have been cheated on, women who are suffering from an illness, women who are struggling right now to make ends meet, husbands not in the, in, in, in the home, you're having to do things on your, work, on your own, you have a lot of weight on you, you have a lot of pressure on you. A woman was suffering in the crowd for 12 years. She's been suffering a long time. She was bleeding constantly and she could not find any cure. But she had heard that Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house to touch his daughter. And this woman heard the crowd. She heard the footsteps of Jesus. And she come up behind him. And the Bible says that she touched Jesus. She did what? She touched Jesus. Now that's a little bit different. That's way different. And the Bible says the moment that she touched him, that she was healed. And Jesus asked his disciples, who 
just touch me. And he looked around to try and see who it was because this was really, really different. He said in verse 46, somebody touched me, a woman, and when she touched me, she pulls something out of me. He said, she deliberately touched me, strategically got in alignment to touch me. She was deliberately trying to touch him. And he said, I felt power going out of me. And so 200 times in the Bible, people were touched by Jesus. Blind people were touched by Jesus. Deaf people were touched by Jesus. Leprous people were touched by Jesus. Dead people were touched by Jesus. Come on. Paralyzed people were touched by Jesus. Tormented people were touched by Jesus. Demon-possessed people were touched by Jesus. But there was this one woman who took it upon herself to touch him. Oh, that's way different. That is way different. Did you know that you can touch Jesus? That you do not have to wait for him to touch you. Some of you are waiting for a touch, seeking a touch. Some of you, some of you are religious about being touched too. Like you go, you go everywhere just looking for a touch, bouncing around all these different churches, trying to get the prophet to lay hands on you so you can get a touch. Writing in everywhere, texting everywhere, writing emails to different people, different men of God, trying to get a touch. When you don't have to, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You got a religious spirit when you're seeking a touch from a man. When you can reach out and touch almighty God. He's standing right in front of you. He's right there in the midst of you. All you have to do is press in. All you have to do is reach out. All you have to do is beg a little. All you have to do is push. All you have to do is be deliberate. And you can have a touch for yourself for yourself I don't wait around anymore to get a goose bump I can't wait around anymore when the presence of almighty God is already here you can reach out by faith and touch God. You could touch him. And so tonight, let's stand. There's a gentleman right here already. Let's give God some praise. Come on. Some of us are chasing after the wrong things. Yeah. Chasing after the wrong things. Running into the arms of men. Looking for love. Looking for a touch so that you could feel loved. Some of you women have given up your bodies as a sin offering to the devil. 
just so you could be touched and feel loved. Likewise, some of you men are trying to get touched through drugs, trying to get loaded, trying to get your tweak on, trying to get a touch from all the wrong things. Haven't you had enough? When's enough enough? I have seen in the last several years being here at the Wayward Outreach, I have seen thousands of people in the worst conditions get touched by God. And that one touch changed their life. Some of you here tonight, you're recipients of that. Your condition is not so bad that a touch from God won't fix it. One touch is all it takes. Just one. And either he touches you or you can touch him. It makes no difference. If you can believe that, you could be healed right now. If you can believe that, if you're radical enough, crazy enough, have faith enough to believe that one touch of God will get you free tonight. I'm going to invite you up here. Come now. All you need is one touch from God tonight. Just one. Your marriage needs a touch from God. Some of you are in, mar- in a, a marriage that needs, that needs God to intervene. Bring your wife up here. Let's just be patient here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just work your way up. Just one touch. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you came forward here right now, I just wanted to stretch your hands up to the sky. Let the finger of God touch your fingers. Let him touch you. There's still folks coming forward. We're going to be patient. Come forward. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church, give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good man. Good man. Stretch your hands up. Are you ready? Pray with me. Say, Jesus, I know 
that a touch from you will change my life. I pray and invite you now to come into my life. I receive your word. I receive salvation. I receive forgiveness. I receive your grace. And I receive your touch right now. Jesus, touch me. Touch me now. Make me new. Change my life. Set me free. Help me to overcome. Jesus, I pray, Lord, for your touch right now. Fill me with your word. Change my life right now. I surrender to you. I give up my way for your way. And I invite you right now. And I receive it. Thank you, Jesus. I will serve you now. Where's the married couples at? Raise your hand up here if you're married. You came up. You came up for prayer. A couple over here. Stretch your hands out to the merry folks. Lord, we pray that you would touch these marriages that are struggling. Marriages, they're, the enemies come in and cause division, cause turmoil, cause separation, causing strife, causing anger in the home causing chaos devil we serve you notice that what God puts together no one can separate and so God we pray that you would touch these marriages touch these couples touch the husband touch the wife and reshape this marriage for your glory God touch the marriage change it God set them free in the name of Jesus God, we thank you and bless you. Fire, Lord. Touch him, Lord, with your fire. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. If you agree, just shout amen tonight. God bless you guys. We love you. You have something to say? Before you leave, Pastor Christian has a few words for you. Can we get hand for Pastor Joe? How many came? I received a touch from Jesus tonight. Tonight was night number one of Way Back Wednesday. Next week, somebody say next week. Gavin Tate is gonna be with us right here in Way Back Wednesday. You don't wanna miss next week. This Sunday, we're gonna hear some testimonies of the men coming down from the mountain. They're gonna come back radically transformed. You don't wanna miss this Sunday. Great testimonies and powerful things from the men up there. But also, number three, if you have any kids in Kids World, we ask you, the first thing you do from this point is go pick up your kids. The food trucks will be here for at least another hour, so you don't have to worry about missing it. But after you pick up your kids, go jump in line, grab some Kona ice, grab, kid, uh, grab some Carl's. We got the youth boot, the youth conference booth if you want to sponsor a youth. We also got some other games and things happening all over. We love you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Invite a friend this Sunday. Invite a friend next Wednesday to Way Back Wednesday Part 2 with Gavin Tate next week. We love you, church. Have a wonderful night. Remember, God is for you. There is nobody who can come against you. God bless you guys.